Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. It's Monday night. Greetings from Plano, Texas, and it's <laughs> chilly. And so uh, if you guys think, I keep moving my office. So tonight I'm sitting in front of the gas fireplace, uh, warming my backside. So it's so good to have us be all together, no matter what the weather is. And we come together because we are a community of people that really do want to change the health of families around the world. So tonight's an important call. Uh, a lot of you know that some of us here, you know, coach with uh, Brandon Barber, and he did a call last Monday on this topic called intrinsic validation, how it can overcome objections. So show of hands, I can't see all of you, but how many of you have been hit with objections? Hey, join my team. It you know, objection, objection, objection. Uh, hey, would you take a look at Juice Plus and see if it makes sense? Objection, objection, objection. Um, you know, hey, Judy, please cancel my order. I don't want to take Juice Plus anymore. And you try to talk to them. Objection, objection, objection. And um, I remember for years, even main stage, the company would have me do a training on overcoming objections. And it would always be, I know how you feel. I felt that way once too. But now I have found, and Brandon calls that, well, that's like your grandmother's drapes. <laughs> it doesn't work. And you know why? Because I don't know how you feel. Your experience is different than mine because you are you and I am me. And that, when you say those things to people, this is what happens. Walls go up. And people today are exposed to so much information. Number one, they're on overload. Remember 100 years ago, most of us were not around, but 100 years ago, you got a piece of mail, maybe once a month. <laughs> and that was all the information that you got. Today with social media, people are bombarded with information. So their walls are up. And most of the time, they feel like they're being sold to. So with this process of intrinsic validation, with this process of intrinsic validation, you actually get people to open up. And it's something that I've been doing now for a year. And I have definitely noticed the difference with the, the Juice Plus team that I work with, uh, but also with my personal relationships with my children. It has so enhanced my relationship with my children is changing the way my children and I communicate. So what I'm seeing already is that this technique of conversation will increase productivity for you, growth, and how about a little cooperation for your family or for your team members? So with that, with Brandon's approval, we're gonna run uh, last week's training and then uh, if you want to hang out at the end for a little Q&A or conversation, we'll do that. Okay, so Kathy, let her run. Say, I'm ready. I'm going to take more notes. Guarded, we get protected. It's part of the deal. How do we get through that? How do we get through all the noise? How do we get people to hear us? If you want to have communications with your significant other in an intense conversations, healthy conflict, how do you do that? If you want to have conversations with your kids um, in an effective way, how do we do that? Intrinsic validation is a phenomenal tool for all of that. So what is validation? Validation is three components. We say, hey, when you validate people, you get through those walls of cooperation and productivity and you get more of it. What is validation? It's three pieces. It's noticing, it's listening, and it's understanding. Noticing, listening, understanding. Those three components. So let's make sure we're just we're clear about what that is, what validation is. When, you, when we say intrinsic validation, we're noticing people, we're listening, we're understanding. Now, there are five key components to validation. So you guys should see them. I share my screen. Here they are, right? Mindset Monday. This is these these next three sheets or worksheets are going to be really helpful to have. So the five keys of validation 
or the five, we could call, I, I used to call them steps. I don't know if I love steps, but to some degree, I guess they are steps. They're this, then this, then this, but you can practice step five, you know, and just practice step five. You don't have to go through one through five, but they really are steps to some degree, but they're keys, right? Notice, create safety. We call that listening to understand, demonstrating understanding, evaluating the timing of things, and then inviting them into your world. So we have five key areas that over the next three weeks, we are going to be talking about. We're going to be talking about those particular things in depth. Today is more of an overview, right? It's an overview of what these what these what these areas are. So, gosh, we gave you a lot today, didn't we? <laughs> today, today's a chunk, but today's the 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 um, the understanding of these components and why we go through them. The next three sessions will go deep into each one of these areas. So it's not just hey, we're giving you it today. Go practice it today. This is a overview of all five pieces of these. And then we go deep into each one of them over the next three weeks. So the key one, noticing. How do we notice? Think about from a concept of people in the world right now. What are people being noticed for? What are people being noticed for on a day-to-day -day basis? You can put in the chat if you want. What are people being noticed for on a day-to-day -day basis? What are you noticing about people on a day-to-day -day basis? What do you notice about people in general? I was four minutes late today to the call. Did anybody notice that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you, you're, you're being kind. You notice vulnerability, all right. Yep, I like that. Deliverables, okay. Crazy, bizarre behavior. Views on topics, behavior, yep. You notice people's concern about the economy, okay. You notice people are overwhelmed and busy, uh-huh. You, know you notice they're frustrated. Skepticism, yeah. People don't smile as much. They react quickly to things, concerns about, ooh, concerns about COVID, yep. What do people notice today? No, mainly they're noticing what? What are all those things? The election year, yeah. When you notice somebody's behavior, okay, so you notice somebody's problems, you notice their uncertainty, anxiety, negativity, okay? It's judgment, right? So most of what you're noticing on a day-to-day -day basis is judgment. Yeah, yeah. Either your judgment of others or your judgment of yourself or other people's judgment of you, right? But most of what we notice, we're really not noticing, we're judging. So when we talk about notice, I want you to recognize that there's judgment and then there's noticing. And you're like, well, I just noticed that that person screwed up or they did something wrong. Well, that's a judgment. And remember, we cannot influence the people we judge. So noticing becomes a very big different or very big different. It becomes a very different thing than judgment. So when we're talking about noticing, we're talking about, hey, looking for what's good. You know, if you just spend an entire day looking for the good in people, how would your day be at the end of the day? If you didn't get offended or take offense or get or judge throughout an entire day, what would a day look like for you? What would that day be like? You know, like I didn't judge today. I didn't get offended. I didn't notice anything bad that anybody did. Well, come on. Brain's going to notice some of that stuff. Brain likes to judge because it likes to stay alive. And in order to stay alive, it must judge and it must notice a lot of preferences. It thinks it needs to notice what, how your expectations aren't being met, what your preferences are and what the, how those preferences aren't meeting, right? So that's a lot of judgment. That's a lot of noticing the things that I don't necessarily think we really 
want to be noticing. At least they're not creating a magnetizing situation for us. So when we say notice, we want to notice what's good. Are they kind? Are they strong? What are their characteristics? Are they compassionate? If you can get really good at noticing beyond the physical, you can get really good at magnetizing people, right? Notice and acknowledge somebody's job well done. How many of you don't necessarily notice a job well done because you're like, hey, I already expect it to be done well. I expect it to be done like I expect it to be done. I expect it to be done like if I were to do it. So I'm not necessarily even going to notice a job well done. They should be out. They should already doing, be doing it. What about unique contributions and unique accomplishments? You know, we, we do this thing in our, in our um, academies where we talk about gold, right? We say, hey, what's your gold at the very beginning? Let's share your gold. And people are like, well, here's my gold. And then I hear, but, right? Except, and, and then they tell me what didn't go right. So, you know, we have to, we, we have to get really good at noticing the good, acknowledging the unique the beautiful, the things we're grateful for. Yes. So brain is off, is going to go to judgment first for survival, just us. The second key, and, and again, this is, this is the overall picture today. We dig deeper. We're going to go deeper each week. So the next four weeks are going to be really important. I think it's, I think it's four. I think it's this one and three more. Um, but what a better way to start off 2024 than magnetizing more people in your life, right? You've seen a lot of our work that we've done over the last month, a lot of our challenges and a lot of our virtual events and, and, and training has been on magnetizing other people. What a better way to do it. What a better rate, way to create a raving fan culture than right here. Key two, be safe, create safety. Safety comes from listening to understand. Safety does not come from fixing people. Safety does not come from changing how people think. That's not safety. And you guys all know it. You've done some sort of interaction with each other in either your, um, uh, 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 a masterclass or a academy or a virtual event. You've interacted back and forth with people where you're like, hey, tell me more. Help me understand. What's that like? You've all done that. You've all asked those questions. And you know how difficult it can be to not try to fix. But creating safety is what we're doing here. You're like, Brandon, validation's asking all these questions. It's creating safety in a relationship or in a, in a, in a conversation. Right? So... When's the last time you really dug in and listened to understand? When's the last time somebody listened to understand for you and not tried to fix it or change it? I mean, I, I, people are full of advice. We are, as human beings, we're full of advice. So somebody shares something with us and we're like, hey, what about this or this or that? We, we like to give advice. And what I see people do is they shut down, right? You have a conversation with somebody and they're like, well, what about this? Or how about this? They play devil's advocate or they, they're not like, hey, help me understand. And really, you got to care here. You got to really care enough to listen to understand. So, you know, to ask these questions is fantastic. To ask these questions is fantastic. Tell me more. Help me understand. What's that like? Th these are all fantastic questions. If you have an intention to really want to know, because if your intention is not to want to know, they're really not that great questions. They're just, you're just going through the motions. So what I want you to get good at is listening to understand, listen carefully for verbal hints. Hey, I'm really having a hard time with this. Tell me more about that. Hey, um, you know, I think, gosh, I, wouldn't it be nice to get away? Get, go, go to Tahiti and stay in one of those. What are they saying? Like, what are the clues? They want to get away. Tell me more about getting away. Gosh, I'm really having a hard time with this. Hey, I heard I'm having a hard time with this. Verbal clues, verbal hints. Be on the lookout for verbal hints. 
I used to have conversations with people. I still do. You guys see me write. Not that pen. You guys see me write all the time, right? I'm like writing. I'm taking notes. I'm going to tell you what I'm taking notes on. Verbal hints. Things that you say, verbal hints. I'm like, doom. One word. Two words sometimes. So I can reflect back to it because I'm going to forget. So I know when you're actually physically having a conversation with somebody, you're not going to be going, hey, hang on. Let me make a verbal note about that. Or let me make a verbal, let me write in my journal right here as I talk to you. But if you can be on the phone or you're on Zoom or you're in text or that's a good place to be, right? That's a good thing, good practice to have, writing verbal hints down. Because then you just say, hey, you said this, tell me more about this. I heard you say that, tell me more about that. That tells people you're listening. And you are, you're listening to understand. So get good at listening for verbal hints. And you're like, well, what about when you're having a, one-on-one -on -one conversation and it's in person. A little bit tougher, right? Because your brain's trying to listen to respond. But get good at, hey, what they just say? So you might have to sneak in you know, a quicker, hey, tell me more about that. Help me understand that. Might have to jump in a little bit faster. But that's, that's creating safety, right? And then you continue to create safety by demonstrating understanding. And we all know the old demonstration of understanding. I know how you feel. Me too. Felt the same way when I was going through that. Here's what I found work. Feel, felt, found is like grandma's drapes. It's old school. It's like, eh, nope, I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't want grandma. We don't want grandma's drapes involved in this. We want you to create a place that demonstrates understanding and it's simply putting yourself in someone's shoes. What were they experiencing? What were they feeling? What did they have going on at the time? And you simply turn that into a question. I was feeling stressed. Hey, are you feeling stressed? I was feeling overwhelmed when that was going on with me. Hey, are you feeling overwhelmed? I give the example of my mom's funeral, you know, when I, this was 20, my gosh, 20 years ago. Um, I'm sitting there and people are coming up to me. Hey, uh, I know how you feel. Lost my mom two weeks ago. Hey, I know how you feel. Lost my mom six months ago. Hey, I know how you feel. Lost my mom in 1985. Like, over and over again. I was like, no, oh, I was blocked off. I was like, go away, go away. I don't even know what those people look like. I was just checked out. And then somebody came up and said, hey, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm fine. They're like, do you feel like you have to say I'm okay and you really don't feel okay? I'm like, yeah. Do you feel just like you want to run out of here and just run away from all of this because it's so overwhelming yeah are you just feeling like you don't even know what to do and what emotion to feel and it just feels chaos in your brain yeah now what am i doing at this point i'm all ears i'm all ears oh my gosh are you kidding me i'm all ears they've just she just asked me numerous questions that demonstrate she understands and then she says hey i know i lost my mom you know, whenever. But by that time, I was all ears because she asked me questions. I always tell you guys, how's your, team, how's your team feeling? What are they experiencing? Are they experiencing frustration, disappointment? Hey, are you feeling great questions to ask? Are you feeling like you want to quit? Is that a question to ask? Well, if they're in a space where they're really frustrated, they're probably in that place. I'd never ask that question, Brandon. You should. They're going to go, they know exactly how I feel. Now I can let them have all of my cooperation and productivity, or at least a significant portion more of it. Um, so demonstrating understanding. Now, again, notice how these aren't, they are steps, but they're not. So it's not like you have to go through step one, two, three, four. You can, and it's kind of how I process them in my mind. One, two, three, four, boom, five as I go along. But listen, if you just practice this one thing, it's going to create validation, right? So it's not like you have to go, oh, pfft, didn't ask him, tell me more. Didn't say, help me understand. I screwed that up. I can't create or demonstrate a safe place now. No, actually you can. You can go straight here. Now, here's the part most people have the hardest time with. Key four, it's the time, timing of it. When do we make the decision to then go to step five? When do we invite them into our world? When do we share what we want to share? When do we fix? When do we give advice? When do we share? When do we sell? When do we 
when do we go to what we want to say, right? And this is like, don't make it harder than it needs to be. It's trusting your intuition here. You've listened, you've stepped in. Is it time for you to communicate? And you gotta, I, I sort of go through these questions and I've done them so many times in my brain that they become automatic now. Did they just need a sounding board? Did they just need somebody to talk to? Or do they really have some, do they have, do they need something I have? And have I listened and am I aware of something they've said that I have something to give them? I have some value to bring to them. And I'm like, yep, I heard this, this, and this, and it's time to bring value. I recommend, or would you mind if I share? Would you mind if I recommend? That's when you go to principle five. So principle four, listen, we'll spend some time there. We'll dig in deeper in these next four because a lot of people are like, ah, I have a hard time with this. I'm not sure when or how. This, this is practice. This is practice. But you get good at it. You get better at it. And the better you get at it, um, the more effective you are. Yes. So key four is evaluating that moment. When do you step in? How do you step in? And then key five is just inviting them into your world. And it simply sounds like this. It's so basic. Notice, notice principle five, key five, step five is shorter than all the other steps. But it's the place most of us go. Us fixing, us recommending, us giving advice, us telling, us, us in our own opinion. The stuff that's about me, I. Stuff that's about you. Key five is the lowest, the least amount of information. Why? Because it's not the most important, the first four are. The first four are to get the cooperation and productivity you need. So key five, you mind if I share? Would it be okay if I made a recommendation? Do you mind if I give you an idea? Would it be okay if I shared something? Guys, that goes so far. Oh my gosh, instead of just jumping in with something, instead of just fixing, instead of just changing. But if you'll step into their world, you'll care enough and then... You'll go to the place where you say, do you mind if I share? Would it be okay if I gave some advice? Would it be okay if I made a recommendation? Do you mind if I share my story? Do you mind if I share my piece? Like, yes. My gosh, you've stepped into my world. I'm, I'm there. I'm in it with you. So key, keys, steps, principles of validation. The next four weeks or three weeks, we go deeper in these areas, okay? So we'll go deeper in each one. So lucky you guys, for the next three Mindset Mondays, we get to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So lots of practice. What a better way to do 2024. No matter where your goals are, what a great way to do 2024. Start off with validation. Yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, one last thing I want to share with you guys because we have an upcoming uh, challenge that we're doing. How many of you remember, Pamelia, I know you'll remember this, Fearless in Your Femininity. You guys remember that? I think we can cut. This is not for any of the guys out there. There we go. Wow. Um, I would love to hear some of your takeaways from this training, uh, anything that he said that really resonated with you, anything that he said that, you know, you're gonna take heart and maybe do a little differently when, when we're talking to people, when we're doing reach outs. Anybody wanna share? I'll share, Terry. Um, okay, well, so- Are you well? Yes, I'm well. I'm wearing a face mask, I'm multitasking. Um, I have my- <laughs> Fruit yeah. and omega capsule on my face. Um, okay, so one thing I love that he shares is there's judging and noticing, and we can't influence the people that we judge. Um, when I worked through um, the academy with him, and I realized uh, when I did the assessment that I actually was judging people, like internally judging them, and not even realizing that I was doing it. And so your mirror neurons are like sending all these like basically bad signals to people, um, when you're doing that. And so 
coming from a posture of always looking for the good um, and looking, the act of looking for the good um, changes your mirror neurons. So not coming yeah. from a place of judgment. You know, uh, 30 years ago, this was hocus pocus. Uh, now it's science. I mean, people now know that, yes, which how you feel about someone, if you're in judgment of them, they pick up on that and they will shut down to your message. Yeah, it's not voodoo anymore. It's it's the way we are, it's the way the creator made us, okay? And, and in the beginning, it was for self for self-protection. It was for self-protection. Thank you. That to me, when, you know, when the first time, I did a one-on-one -on -one with Brandon and uh, and he you know hit me with you can't Terry, you cannot influence the people that you judge. Boy, okay. Hard hit for me. That was a hard hit for me. Anybody else have something that he said that you were just <gasps> well, I think Terry, the along the line with what Abby just said, um, you can't influence anybody when you're judging yourself. Joy rise. Thank you know, that's another one that I think we got to think about. Um, how are they going to listen to you? You're just judging yourself. Why would they listen? Why would they be caring anything what you're doing or saying? No, Judy, it's really funny because today's call with Brandon, he talked about uh, the next aspect of this was really shadow work, our own personal shadow work that people pick up on. And uh, years ago and bought from Bob Proctor, because I was a student of Bob Proctor's 30 years ago. I traveled all over the country to be with his programs. I'll never forget what he said. He said, you will never, ever, ever surpass your self-image. Boom. So that shadow work uh, is so important. Judy, that's such a great contribution. Thank you. Um, anybody else have anything that they want to share? Any takeaways that they had from today's training? I'll share. Tasha. <laughs> Um, so something that really stuck out to me was the, um, do you feel like this question or did you feel like that or, um, X, Y, Z in their experience, something that, um, I loved about that, especially right now being pregnant is people think that you want to hear certain things and then you just kind of, you don't appreciate it after they've asked because they're not respecting you or your boundaries or where you're at in your position in life and that's I just loved that because you have to take a moment cognitively to be like this is about you not about me that was so powerful I think that was that step four even though we don't have to do it in steps to actually ask you know do you feel stressed out do you feel lonely uh, do you feel like quitting do you feel like do you feel like, do you feel like, and that's what will bring the walls down. And that person realizes that you're in it with them. Okay. And that you're listening. You're what is, what, what kind of listening does he call it? Um, listening to somebody help me. Understand listening to understand. Yeah, listen. To understand when you start asking those questions. Yeah. Listening to understand. And then how wonderful the last step, you know, if you have validated, ask the questions and something, this is, again, I learned this from Bob Proctor and, um, and, and, and Brandon comes out of that school too. We've had so many conversations, you know, where that he comes out of the Bob Proctor Academy too. I have always, always, always asked permission before I share Juice Plus, you know, may I share what I have experienced? May I share uh, what I've learned to be true? Uh, may I share what I learned last week? May I share what I have just discovered? May I share? I have always, for 30 years, before I shared Juice Plus, I have always, always asked permission. And you know what? I have never had anybody go, I don't think so. That could be, you know, okay. So, sure, Terry, tell me. Tell me what you know. Tell me what you've experienced. You know, I believe. And then going back to uh, what's his name from years ago. You know, I believe I have a solution for you. Share what you know. And then I believe I have you have suffered enough. I have a solution for you. But this 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 process 
that he takes us through is, is unbelievable. Kathy, is there any way that we can take these worksheets and put them on the Team Up Facebook page? We don't have them. I don't know if you have them. Oh, I have them. So they're right okay. on they're right on my on my back office. So we can pull them up and put them on the Team Up Facebook page because I sure. think people appreciate those notes. All right. Uh, oh, one more thing. Will you put up that last image that I I asked you to do? Da -da 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 -da. I'm back on the road, guys. And uh, I'm kind of scared and excited at the same time. I haven't been in front of an audience in, ooh, many years. And it's a program I've been working on now for a couple of years called Aging Backwards. And I'll be in St. Louis Friday night, the 26th. And I'll be closing out the original on Saturday. And then I travel. Miss Abby's going to join me in St. Louis. Then I travel back to Clarksville, Tennessee, where I'll be doing the programs for Abby. So who do you know in the Clarksville, Tennessee area? Who do you know in St. Louis? Uh, plug them in. I would love to host and greet anyone that you know. All right. So having said that, my darlings, stay warm. Uh, I think if you want to jump off, you please do. I think uh, I'm meeting here with another group in just a minute. So the rest of you can say good night. Arriba de Chamorro, baby. Stay warm. Happy birthday, Kathy Schlund. Yeah, we did that. <laughs>